One of the things we're doing with the museum today is reaching out to the kids. Okay? The adults get it. We understand it. We can read it. But the kids, they're the ones around this community that we say, come on, be a success, do these kind of things. Well, what we're telling them is we have two, over 200 examples of people who were able to do these things. They were able to knock it out of the park in whatever their endeavor, an artist or a musician or a sports person. And so once they figure out that this, this is where these people slept where they slept and eat where they eat, they realize, well, maybe something is possible. And if nothing else, they'll learn some of the, the, the traits of some of the people who uh, are in the exhibit, the mistakes they made, the successes they had, but they'll learn a little bit more about life, and they'll learn that this is not a dead-end street. This is a launch pad, okay? Because I'm going to ask you, do anybody know of any other place where there's over 200 people coming out of this and, and making that kind of a footprint? I'd like to talk to you after this is over with, because I'm not aware of that place. This is a unique place. And so we ask you to help us to continue. We're, we're a 501c3, and um, we've, I've been asked to be sure and remind you about our membership application. We send information to you. you you're notified of things, events like this, and birthdays of all of our people inside the building. One thing that, that, that's striking with the kids, we found a way to reach the kids, okay? They look at all the stuff on the walls, and they don't get it. They wonder what the adults are doing hanging all this stuff on the wall. But then we introduce them to one of our people in the, in the exhibit, a guy by the name of Kelly Asbury. And once we pull up his screen on those touch screens that we have out front, uh, they find out that he is the animator and director of Shrek, Toy Story, Nightmare Before Christmas, Romeo and Juliet, the list just goes on. He's their guy. And once they see him, then they realize, oh, this guy's got a backstory. And so that's when they start connecting that all these people in here have a backstory, and it makes it open that conversation with them. So help us uh, do these things. I will tell you that our touch screen for sports, we hope to have it up today, but we have one connection that we couldn't overcome, but we'll be having that up. And Coach, we're going to get you on that uh, touch screen. And the museum, they, they tell you don't touch anything around the museum. We tell you, touch touch screens, because you'll learn a whole lot about our collection that we have of the, the 200 people. So I'll, I will uh, proceed on. Coach James Gamble, uh, Bob West, former notable sports writer for the Port Arthur News uh, and also an inductee in the Sports Hall of Fame, uh, submitted Coach James Gamble's name in consideration for being inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame. After applying the criteria established by the Port Arthur Historical Society Board when the museum opened in 1994, I recommended you to the board and in, for induction in the Sports Hall of Fame and the vote was unanimous. James Gamble is probably the most honored person in Port Arthur. In addition, he has many honors and recognitions and even has a street name for him. James Gamble was born in Texarkana, Arkansas at an early age. Uh, his family moved to Los Angeles, California, where he graduated from Jordan High School. He attended East Los Angeles Junior College on a ba basketball scholarship. He graduated from Prairie View A&M University in 1957 with a Bachelor's of Science degree. He also received a Master of Science degree from Prairie View A&M University. Gamble was the outstanding athlete in high school where he earned letters in basketball and track. At Prairie View, he was chosen as an All-Southwestern Athletic Conference basketball player for two years. He was selected as the All-American in track on two different occasions. He also participated in 1960 uh, Olympic trials for the long jumper. James Gamble's illustrations, or sorry, excuse me, James Gamble's illustrious teaching career began in 1957 at O.J. Thomas High School in Cameron, Texas. After one year of teaching, he served two years in the United States Army. After being discharged from the Army in 1960, he returned to Prairie View A&M, where he was served as a head track coach and assistant basketball coach. In 1961, he was called back by the United States Army, said they needed for one more year during the Vietnam conflict. Gamble became the head coach and physical education teacher at Port Arthur Lincoln High School in 1962. During the, yeah, there you go. Uh, during his uh, tenure uh, as teacher, coach at uh, Lincoln High School, he was selected Teacher of the Year and led the Lincoln basketball team to four state champions. Yeah. Additionally, Coach Gamble won five regional championships, 13 bi-district titles, 16 district championships, and coached several all-star teams. He was voted District Coach of the Year on nine different occasions by his peers. Gamble won 
670 games at Lincoln between 1963 and 1988, inclusive of his record-breaking return after retiring. In, 1998, in the 1998-99 season, Gamble would go on to post a 29-6 winning streak and a state finalist for the finish. The legendary coach James Gamble's success has earned him a list of achievements Gamble has received the honors of. The Hall of Fame inductee at Prairie View A&M University, 1991. Southwestern Athletic Conference Hall of Fame inductee in New Orleans, Louisiana, 94. The Texas African American Association Hall of Honor inductee, Houston, Texas, 94. The Texas High School Basketball Hall of Fame, 1995. Southeast Texas Coaches Association Hall of Honor inductee, 1997. And Texas High School Coaches Association Hall of Honor inductee. In 1999, the city of Port Arthur renamed a section of Thomas Boulevard to James Gamble Boulevard. Since retiring from coaching in 1998, 1988 and transportation director in 1995, he has continued to contribute to the community. He also serves on the Valero Community Advisory Board, the Pleasure Island Commission, the Port Arthur Industrial Committee uh, Community Advisory Group, and as a member of the YMC Board of Directors. And he's also on the Port Arthur Independent School District Bond Oversight Advisory Committee. He was elected and currently serves as a commissioner on the Port Arthur's Drainage District Number 7. In 2012, Gamble received the official uh, Kappa uh, Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated Diamond Lapel Pin, recognizing 50 years of membership. James and his wife Margaret, Margaret, so glad to have you here today, have two children, James Jr. and Margaret Lynn. They also have five grandchildren, Andrew, Tanya, Ashley, Anthony Jr., and Victoria. Uh, they have six great-grandchildren, Isaiah, Jeremiah, uh, Tiana, and Tiara, and Cameron, and, and finally Carter. James and Margaret are members of the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, to commemorate the legacy of James Gamble, a bronze bus dedicated to his honor and in his honor is placed in the foyer of the Lincoln High School Gymnasium, now renamed the James Gamble Gymnasium. After the board of the PISD approved uh, coaches induction, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, I have to, I'm a, we have to get a new prescription here. <laughs> after, after the board of the Port Arthur Historical Society approved Gamble's induction, we had the pleasure of sitting down with him to discuss his life. Our president, uh, who's here today, uh, President Sam Monroe, is uh, of the Port Arthur Historical Society. Dr. Monroe conducted the interview. A uh, product that he interviewed will become part of his uh, new kiosk touchscreen system in the Sports Hall of Fame. But uh, today, as part of Coach Gamble's induction, we'd like to just share a few little portions of that interview with you. But first,
Okay, we're going to hear from Coach Campbell. <laughs> we're happy today to welcome uh, Coach James Gamble uh, to the Museum of the Gulf Coast. And our purpose is to talk with him about his life and uh, his career. He's a new member of the Hall of Fame here at the museum. Coach Gamble is arguably probably the most honored man in Port Arthur. Uh, he's had a street named for him. A bust of him is on display at the school where he coached. Uh, he has had recognition by his alma mater, Prairie View <coughs> University, A&M. He's done so many things in the community. He's actually in a half a dozen halls of fame or halls of honor. Uh, so we're very, very happy to welcome you, such a distinguished person who represents Port Arthur and Southeast Texas uh, in such an admirable way. Uh, Coach, thanks for taking the time. Uh, thank you, Dr. Monroe, for having me, and uh, it's, it's certainly an honor to be here. Were you a spreader in track and field, or did you run I, hurdles? I, I, I was a long jumper. Long jumper. Yeah, but I could run a bit. Not just uh, just sprints overall. And at Prairie View, did you continue your track and field? Yes, I did. I, I finished second in the NCAA long jump in 1957. The, the Olympic champion uh, uh, defeated me because he jumped way out of my range. I did a 25 foot long jumper. And uh, he was a 26 foot long jumper because he, he won the Olympics in 56. A young man by the name of Greg Bell. But uh, I had a I had a stellar track year and a super basketball career at Prairie View. And in fact, while you you, you know you mentioned that uh, I, I am in the Hall of Honor at my university, I am also in the Hall of Honor in the SWAC, which is the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And I was inducted in the same class with Walter Payton and Willis Reed. There's a couple of names we've heard before. Hey, everybody's heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I must have done uh, something right, but I had a stellar career in uh, uh, track and field. I was the NAIA long jump champion. I won the Drake, and uh, those were highlights there because I was the conference champ for two or three years over there in, uh, in the long jump. And, uh, <clears throat> and that my senior year, I finished second in the uh, long jump. The, in the, the event was held uh, at the University of Texas over there in Austin. Did you graduate in 1960, was it? I graduated, no sir. I graduated in 1957. 57. 57, yes. Did you immediately go into coaching? I immediately went into coaching and teaching. I did for one year, and then I was drafted into the uh, U.S. Army. You know, that old song, Mail Man, Mail Man, what do you have for me? It's just a long letter, brother. We need you across the sea. <laughs> I wound up... Uh, Two years in the United States Army, and I came out. University of Prairie View uh, hired me as the head track coach and assistant basketball. I worked there one year, and um, in the meantime, my wife was working down in um, can't even think of the name of the little town that she was working in, but we were a part. So after, the, after that year that I worked at Prairie View, I had offers from uh, several major high schools, and uh, I decided to choose Port Arthur because it was one of the two that uh, offered uh, my wife and myself a job. So I came here. 
and for us, it was, at that time, had a relation, had a reputation in sports, particularly football, I suppose. Uh, yes. It uh, maybe overshadowed basketball a little bit. Uh, uh, a whole lot. A whole lot. Uh, there, but there were a lot of great athletes here when I came. But the bad news was for me that when I, when I came, uh, before I could work a year, they recalled me the Vietnam uh, a crisis or whatever they were calling it, uh, escalated, and they uh, recalled me and I had to spend another year in the Army. On active duty? Yes. And uh, then I returned to Port Arthur as the... Uh, the head basketball coach. We were in that era of, of the segregation where those uh, laws were struck down and the schools were integrated here in about 1970. And it's a little earlier than that? It changed the environment for you and, and for everyone else. Uh, hopefully for the benefit of all. But uh, it was, it was the, different. What that actually did, I think, for the whole state of Texas and gave uh, everyone uh, a look at competition involving everybody. You know, in, instead of being segregated you know, over here, uh, it gave you the opportunity to compete against the best. And this is, I mean, you know, not the best black players or black best white players, the best players. It gave it gave us the opportunity to do that, and uh, uh, and, and that kind of uh, gave you a look at also look at the, the way you you know look at yourself as a coach. How well you were doing the job, your knowledge of the game, or whether your kids were as fundamentally sound as the other kids, and all of that. You know, uh, but. I had no problem with that. The system I came out uh, of uh, in uh, in Los Angeles, and, and I, I competed against uh, all kinds of players: white, black, uh, Hispanic, uh, Japanese. You know, so uh, there was no problem with me. Uh, that I had no problem uh, uh, competing or uh, matching wits with uh, coaches when the integration came uh, here in Texas. You were prepared? Yes. And that was, I got that from my father. My, 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 you know, my, my father not, was not an educated man. And I, I came up in a broken home with four boys and an old man. And he, he told us that any success you have in life is going to depend largely on how well you work with and get along with other people. That was one. Of, that was uh, one of the things that he, he 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 told us, and he reminded us of that almost yearly, and to go to school every day, you know. And um, so he also said. Always be prepared to do the best you can. Always be prepared to do the best that you can. Those, those things uh, uh, have stayed with me from the time uh, I was a little kid uh, up until now. I want to ask you about a memory. Do you? Yeah. Is there a special game that you coached that uh, you have fun? Feelings uh, recollecting about what took place. Well, I'm going to say, you know, it's difficult to, to do it because you have so many games that you you enjoyed uh, being a part of and coaching, and most of those, uh, uh, you know, I only enjoy games when I win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I guess. Pick out one, uh, but I will say this, a uh, 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 1986 uh, championship game, uh, we played uh, the 
team we played was Mansfield. And Mansfield was ranked number two in the state. And uh, um, we, we played Mansfield and it was, uh, it was said that this was probably going to be the best game in the whole state tournament because possibly the, both of our teams were better than everybody else regardless of the uh, classification. And uh, there were some coaches who had, had uh, felt like Mansfield was the better team that Lincoln would be in for, uh, they didn't say Lincoln, they said <laughs> Gamble would be in for a big surprise if he's going to come up here and walk away with this. But at any rate, we beat Mansfield 55 to 39. <laughs> and, Every kid, I had 16 kids in a uniform, and they all played. And I mean, we and it just everybody was happy. The girlfriends, the parents, <laughs> you know, just, we, we all were happy. Except four guys, four guys were standing outside <laughs> when we were leaving and going to the bus to go back to the hotel, and they said, hey, "We should have beat that team." By 30 points, Gamble had gotten too old <laughs> to be coached. <laughs> and I just, yeah, I walked right in front of him and I just laughed. They had the championship trophy in my hand. <laughs> the kids I played, we were all very well satisfied and happy. But, you know, it's just those things. You don't ever please everybody, but that's not your goal anyway. The goal is to, to uh, make the kids that you work with uh, productive young people in later life, and uh, if you if you if you can do that, if you can do that, you have done uh, a good job. Well, we admire you so much. I, I've seen you coach, and uh, my experience was uh, most coaches on the sidelines were jumping up and down and hollering and throwing stuff on the court. And, <laughs> expressing outrage in a call and, but in watching you it just amazed me how composed you were and how softly you spoke and when you'd call the players to the bench uh, you'd they'd lean over to try to hear what you were saying <clears throat> and you didn't have a loud boisterous manner on the coach on the court like so many others do well, Dr. Monroe, uh, I, I, I had all of that during the practice. You know, practice as you know, you, you, you get after the kids, and you, you know, you do what you need to do. But uh, when you get to the game, there's no one who would like to be more successful than the youngster on the floor. He, he, he want to be a successful player out there, he want to be impressive, he want to look good, he, he, he wants to succeed, right? So during the game, if there are problems, the kids, to me, they don't need, I played basketball, basketball all of my life. They don't need fussing and cussing and going on, they need help. So you, so you call a timeout or whatever, and whatever the problem or the difficulty that, the, that he's having out there, he said, you, you explain to him uh, what we did in practice, that you know, we knew we were going to see this, this is what we are not doing. You know? So, I mean, you do things like that. I mean, you try to, to help them. And sometimes you can give kids an assignment that's a little too tough for him because other 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 uh, uh, teams have great players too. So if you've given a youngster an assignment that turns out to be a little bit too tough for him, rather than scolding him and fussing at him, you give him some help. So you know you, you go to an alternative something that will help him do the job that you need uh, need done. Beautiful way of. Of putting it, I would say you've been fairly successful. <laughs> as more offerings and Texans as well. Thank you. It's a great honor to have you here today. It's a great honor to be here.
The accolades are mind-boggling for former Port Arthur Lincoln head coach James Gamble. 670 wins and four state titles. Looking at all of the honors that I have, the ones that strike me most are the ones where they're talking about contributions to the community. And I'm proud of all of that. We've lived here 53 years in this particular house. And uh, this is home for us. And I cannot see turning my back and walking off and leaving it. With Hurricane Harvey stalled over Port Arthur this past August and September, listen as Gamble describes the near-death experience of getting he and his wife Margaret to safety as floodwaters rose to record proportions. The water is coming in the house. Well, she went to the back door. Water just rushed in. I said, man, so I tried to call 911. No, couldn't get anything. So I called the drainage district number seven. By that time, this water is, is here when we walk out of the house. We spent the night, the six of us, in the cab of our truck, and the next day they came and got us in a boat. The water eventually got to the rooftop of the majority of these houses here in the neighborhood. We were very lucky. I had a lot of uh, awards and trophies and plaques and all of those that I was very proud of. But I told my kids a long time ago, I said, whatever we have accomplished in life will be in our hearts forever. The 83-year-old Gamble has endured a stroke that forced him to retire after his fourth state title in 1988. Gamble's vision was affected, but he never lost sight of the goal to help his own community in Port Arthur to rise up to the challenge. I am very grateful for all of the assistance that I've uh, received from friends and whoever well, that's the organization that they have here. Silsby and Memorial were carrying the Golden Triangle banner at the Alamo Dome this year, but when you watch the players and coaches from both teams greeting Coach Gamble before and after the game, you quickly realize what the Hall of Fame coach means to Southeast Texas and the UIL Texas High School Boys Basketball Tournament. For the old coach in San Antonio, I'm Jeff Power. Y'all gonna quit. We're gonna keep on talking about you and saying nice things. How about that? Yeah, <laughs> no objection. I, I wanted to say that the museum has a set of criteria the board of directors always uses in uh, approving someone for inclusion in the Hall of Fame. You have to have roots in this area. Your work has to have a national impact. You have to have a body of work. Then there has to be general public recognition of the work that you've done. You meet all the criteria as Tom has discussed. Tom recommended you to the board and he's mentioned the unanimous vote. And it's my honor and privilege today to read this certificate that we're presenting to you. We hope this finds a place in your home and on your wall. I guess I should say my wife and I had a boat ride that same night. We, we put things higher up on the wall than we used to. <laughs> James Gamble is hereby included in the Sports Hall of Fame in recognition of personal contributions to the sports heritage of the Gulf Coast region, the United States, and the world. And Tom Neal and I have had the privilege of signing this this day. Congratulations, folks.
I want to explain to you why this is so. Uh, I have to do this quite often because everybody you know, complains about how slow I get around and what have you. So, what I want to say is that uh, when I was a, a little fellow, I was a mama's baby, so I never strayed too far from her. But when she would call me, if I was a little ways away, and she would holler, James, ma'am, come here, boy. Before she could say, boy, when she said, come, I was on her. And one morning, I was listening to the radio. And this gentleman came on and he said, if you live in a hurry, you'll die in a hurry. <laughs> if you die in a hurry, they will bury you in a hurry. <laughs> and if they bury you in a hurry, they will forget you in a hurry. <laughs> so ever since I heard that. I've been pumping my brain. <laughs> so I don't do anything fast. But Dr. Monroe, Tom, friends, any elected officials that's here. Whoever else is here, let me put this place out of the mess. Whoever else is here, I am certainly appreciative of what is going on here, and I want you to know that I am peacock proud and honeymoon happy. I love you, all of you, I know. <laughs> but I want to say this, any time that you are honored at this magnitude, you owe a lot of thanks to a lot of people. See, this, what we accomplished at Lincoln High was to me a, a miracle. And, and I had a lot of help. And you know, when I came to Port Arthur, I felt like it's like throwing a rabbit in a brow patch. You know, this is where I want to be. And after I guess maybe a month, I had two or three young fellows, I think it was two, they were absent from school. And the principal always suggested that if you had students miss, just let them know you care about them or concern about them, and you go to their homes and find out what the problem is. So these two particular youngsters lived in Carver Terrace. So when I indicated that I was going over there. Everybody said, Coach, don't go over there. <laughs> so I said, don't go over there. So I didn't, I didn't think much of that. Anyway, one day I took out, and I went over there. In the evening, I went over there. We got out of the car, and I saw a youngster standing around, and I asked him about the two young fellows I was concerned about. He said, well, Mr. They live back there somewhere. He said, but you better be careful. So I'm scared I didn't know what he's talking about. So I started walking through the projects, you know, looking for the numbers that he gave me, the proximity or whatever he gave me. And all of a sudden, bottles started hitting the ground. Bing, bing, rocks and all of that. 
getting all around me. So, let me tell you this. I lived in the projects. So all of my days from elementary through high school. So, this was not new to me. So you know what I did? And rocks and balls started hitting around me. I was picking them up. And the rule, the rule is we've always we, we used to play ball and we call it put back. And your best chance to win the game is to go forward. If you if if you if you go backwards, you you're gonna lose because number one, whatever you had stacked up here, the man coming after you. People have, you know, stuff to work with that you stacked up there. But anyway, the bottom line, I threw balls and rocks and everything back, and I saw jokers running through. It's only about three. And number one, when people do that from cover, they are cowards anyway. Yeah, they were cowards anyway. So when I started rushing them, throwing and all of that, uh, they, but the next day at school, it was all over. Coach Gamble is crazy. <laughs> but, I want to say this. When one day, a lady, little lady came to the gymnasium and and, and I saw her looking around, so I rushed over. I said, how you doing, ma'am? I'm Coach Campbell. May I help you? She said, uh, I'm looking for my little boy. So by that time, the little boy came, and it was one of the ones, little boys would come over to the gym, and they fussing and shooting and saying a few bad words. I dropped them five fingers on them and put them over in the corner with a ball <laughs> and tell them to hush and play ball. <laughs> So this little boy, he came running up to him, to him, you know, and uh, I said, now, I said, is this your little boy? He was in the third grade. I said, ma'am, is this your little boy? She said, no, he's yours. <laughs> he's here tonight. His name is Alfred Como. <laughs> he has been with me since the third grade. And he was on three district championship teams and, and, and well, he, he was in the Earl Evans area and Skeeter and Cut and Deal and all of that when we were transforming from, from a lot of football players to a lot of kids who just played basketball. But anyway, the first person that I'd have to, I'd have to mention and to give a great deal of credit for the success of our program at Lincoln High School is Coach Richard Williams. Yeah. I, met, I met Richard, and he was going to Southern University. He was a sophomore and I was a senior. And he, he, he know everybody know him. He was a great athlete, but he was mainly a football player. And, uh, but he was playing basketball when I met him. And uh, he's a personable guy, you know, you know, easy to meet, and we talked and everything. Because we played a couple of basketball games with him, and I taught him a lesson he'd never forget. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time, we became great friends. And, and when I arrived here, we renewed our friendship, and he became my assistant coach. And he was the backbone. Uh, of our program, especially with the discipline part. He could really handle that, you know. And uh, so I certainly appreciated the job that he did uh, with the basketball program and with me uh, during our beginning. And then uh, things started to change a bit. He was selected as the assistant of uh, the defensive coordinator. So then he was taken out of the basketball program. And uh, I inherited Coach Knowles. Coach Knowles came in, did a wonderful job. He didn't know a whole lot about basketball.
but he was willing to lie, and he did. Came in, and he did a marvelous job. But I always needed that one person that believed in my philosophy, believed just like me. And the reason, one of the reasons why it was like that, his senior year, he was the captain of the team, and we had won the uh, by district, and we were going to Houston to play in the regionals. So he came to me, and he was halfway scared because he knew I didn't book on too, you know. <laughs> so he came in, he said, Coach, he said, uh, when we go, we were playing Wheatley in the first game. He said, Coach, I know you got a game plan. I said, yes, I do have one. He said, well, I just came to ask you, just, let's not use your game plan and just, just let us, just let us, cut us a loose and just let us play like we know how. I said, well, son, I don't know. I I said, it's always best to have a plan and then have an alternate. Coach, I just wish you would let us go. You know. So I thought about it. I said, well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let them do it. So we got over there, boy, when Wheatley got through with us. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> when Wheatley got through with us, he came, he came back. Well, anyway, I, I'm, I'm not going to say what he said when he came back. But the young man was Melvin Gatwood. <laughs> So Melvin, he came back into the district, worked at Woodrow Wilson. We had a wonderful team. In fact, those kids that he coached over there was our first state championship team. He, he, yeah, he came in he, he gave me, he gave me the boost that I needed. In other words, the trust in someone else that could could, could deal with the kids with the same philosophy that I had. And we took <coughs> off from, from Top Cat to Melvin, we took off. And I can't say enough about those two people. And the real kicker was Dr. Verley Mitchell. Now some of you might know Dr. Verley Mitchell. She became the principal at Lincoln High School. She was a music person. At the start. She didn't know no whole lot about football and that kind of stuff. Or basketball either, you know. So she was calling everybody in and asking you point blank, what, what can I do to help you uh, get the best out of your program? Just let me know what you need. And I sat down and I talked with her and told her what I needed. And she gave me what I needed was the freedom to think basketball all year long. And she gave me that. And when I left out of her office, I was tap dancing. <laughs> but all, all of those, those things and those people that I'm telling you, they are not the only ones, and when you start calling names, uh, you know, you're always going to leave somebody out, but I'm going to tell y'all, all of the assistant coaches that I had, all of the players, we've always had talented players. I saw that when we came before, I didn't even, you know, I, I hadn't touched them, and we, and we had talent here. And we had great fan support. We had, did you hear that a while ago when we started, we started that school song? <laughs> hey, we were hitting pretty nice. <laughs> but I, but I want to tell you the, the fan support that you, we had, you know, all of the support we had from the community went into us becoming the type of program that we came, to, we, we, we became, you know? so. It, even though I'm standing here, I got my little envelope here, you know, and I've been praised and, and talked of good about it and all that kind of stuff. I want to thank God for surrounding me 
surrounding me with all those good people that I had and that is the main reason that I am standing here and y'all are listening to me. Thank, thank all of you so much for coming and bon feet. And if you guys that want to say something, and they didn't want you to have the last word, okay? Uh, Michael Jaco uh, and uh, Don Hinton, uh, Keith Hall, uh, Brian uh, James Payne, and David Melvin. If y'all will all come forward right now, if you have something you wanted to share uh, with Coach. First, there it is. There it is. How y'all doing? My name is Michael Jaco, and uh, I was fortunate enough to be uh, on the first uh, state championship uh, team in 1981. And uh, for uh, our members uh, of that team uh, here, I know we have a couple of players here. I want you guys to stand. And, uh, my name is Michael Jaco. He said next to me. He said, do he need to proofread what I'm about to say. <laughs> He's been doing that all my life. And, and I appreciate that, okay? But I didn't let him proofread, okay? <laughs> uh, as a child, I know I always wanted to play basketball, and I always wanted to be good, and so forth. And um, I always wanted to win uh, state, and I wanted to play for Coach Gamble. Now, Coach Gamble had some very good players ahead of me before that time. And, uh, and their names are behind me, and so forth. But what was so special about what we did in 1981 was we were pioneers. Amen. We paved the way, okay, and it was 5A. And even though Coach had good players, Top Cat, and so forth, uh, uh, they could never get out of Houston. But we were fortunate enough to get out of Houston, and now Coach was able to continue that path because of the 5A state 1981 team. I told Coach I had some things I was going to say about it, and Coach said that he's going to always have the last say, but I'm glad uh, Tom Neal uh, fixed that. Okay? <laughs> but you know, it was a privilege to be able to uh, win that state championship in uh, 5A in 1981 and to be able to put a cowboy hat and a cigar in Coach Hen. I remember that picture of him getting off the bus and Coach Gatewood and that was a memorable picture and so forth. The only thing that I hate was that I was not able to pay for that myself. <laughs> also, uh, uh, the only thing that I uh, would like to say, and without joking aside, and I had a couple of minutes, is that uh, Coach has been a mentor in my life. Yeah. In a lot of ways and so forth. Coach would, uh, even after I graduated, Coach would come to the house. After church, we'd sit down and watch some games and, and then, uh, then Butte came along. And then that was it for me. Uh, I remember when Coach would have Andre come to his house and cut the grass. And then Andre tried to pass it on to me. And I did it once. And I was saying, I said, no, no, we ain't doing that. We're going to let James come down and take care of that, okay? <laughs> but uh, I want to thank you, Coach, for being a mentor in my life. I want to thank you, Ms. Gamble, for inviting me over to the house and fixing me those sandwiches and so forth. And uh, she, she, Ms. Coach, Ms. Gamble fixed me some very nice sandwiches. Lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, <laughs> and uh, I didn't take that for granted. I want to thank you guys for being in my life, and I and coach you. There's no other person that uh, is more deserving than you and your family. Thank you.
as Jerry's playing, I'm a member of the 86 state championship basketball team, the one that he said was memorable. Uh, <laughs> I have joined with many of my brothers as well from the 86 state, uh, state championship team, and we are honored to be here. For those of you who know, uh, when we get ready to start games, we would always start with the chant. It was very clear for those of you who are basketball players you remember it. He yeah. said, all for one, one for all, all for bees, bees for all. We a team, can't be beat, won't be beat. What are we going to do? When? What are we going to do? When? What are we going to do? When? Uh, that was very clear to us because Coach Gamble taught us that we are all a team. There was no one individual. As you can tell, we were all loyal to the bees, and the bees were loyal to us. And we were always a team, and he gave us the confidence that we would win, couldn't be beat, won't be beat. Coach Gamble, we thank you because that's not only information that you've given to us to become basketball players. It is things that you've given to me to become a lawyer, to become successful. Become successful. I fight as hard in the, in the courtroom as I fight on the basketball court, and that is because of you. Thank God for blessing us. reminded me of me. I never told him that. I never really told anybody. Because he did some things that was the best for the team and you know and all that kind of stuff, you know. So I was I was really appreciative of that. James was very competitive. He was serious about everything, you know? And I was too. So I, you know I didn't mind it. So one day, <laughs> we were in practice. So he came up and he said, Coach, how about a race? I said, okay. We were in the gym. You know, so somebody said, go, and we took off. Boy, and he got that and he had to lean. He, 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 he won. <laughs> But it was by the hair on his chin. <laughs> <laughs> so, but what I want to tell you, when we had that race, James was 17 and I was 75. Keith Law, I was part of 86 as well. James, uh, were some of the team members from the 86 recognized? Okay, okay, good deal. Hey, he's glad to be here. Congratulations, Coach, on this honor. It's a great award, great honor for you. Uh, for me, uh, coming through uh, Lincoln, playing basketball for you, uh, it, it rounded me uh, in my career now that I'm in law enforcement as a leader in, in law enforcement uh, arena. Uh, like James said, he fights hard in the courtroom. I, I fight hard out there, you know, doing law enforcement. But at the same time, uh, the success that that, that, uh, that we um, came through with all the guys that came before us, uh, Top Cat, uh, we used to open up the gym during the summertime. I think that, that success right there, playing with those guys, helped, uh, you know, allowed us to play with more confidence when we played uh, these teams around, the, uh, especially when we played Bay City, going to the state. But uh, I appreciate those guys as well. Juice, uh, Wax, uh, all those guys used to come to the gym. Thad was there every day. He worked with us uh, continuously. Uh, Michelle, Kurt, uh, all these guys, man, uh, was there. Sam Jackson, that was part of our success going into the 86 state championship game. And uh, I just want to say thank you and uh, appreciate everything you've done for me. Very disciplined, did things like we want them to be done. Uh, 
the 86 team, they was I guess, the smartest. That's going to make Juice mad. <laughs> the smartest of the state championship teams that we had. Just most of them was just good students. They were disciplined. They did everything. And that was the re they They was like 36 or 7 and 1. 30 something and 1. We lost one game. We lost one game. <laughs> we were in the YMBL tournament. We was playing uh, team Lafayette, Lafayette, Louisiana. <laughs> so uh, we, we had we had about uh, we was we was matching scores every time. We scored, they scored, they scored. So I decided that was, we had about thirty seconds left that we would play for the last shot. We was to, we just going to put all, throw all up the marbles in the rain, and we just going to take the last shot, you know. So we been moving the ball, we been disciplining all that kind of stuff like that. It came down about two or three seconds left in the game, and Keith turned the ball over. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't we didn't get the shot. <laughs> Distraught. I mean, he was he was hurt to the bone. <laughs> so, so, so I said, so I said, Keith, don't worry about that, son. You know, everything's fine. We did a good job. You know, we had every opportunity to win the game, but you know, sometimes things don't go our way, and blah blah. Don't worry about it, son, and all that. And that's that's he was a young man, young boy, whatever we gonna call him, young boy, young man, and then. So, you know, part of my job is to let him know the mistakes are going to be made and everything's all right and blah, blah, blah. But now he's grown. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to have to tell him, you missed that game. <laughs> integrity and all the things it takes for me to be great and, and pass it on to the next folks. Uh, I wouldn't be the leader I am today at my trucking company without the everything he instilled into me, the greatness, the integrity, the relentless, whatever, keep going at it no matter how hard the day goes, you just, you get hard with it. And uh, I was a young boy. I lived uh, a block away from the high school. Before Coach Gamble ever won his first state championship, I already considered him a legend. Most of us considered him a legend after the championship started coming in. But when I saw that guy coming down the street, he had a white Cardoba, Chrysler Cardoba. <laughs> out playing marbles, out playing football, whatever I'm playing outside, I stopped. God would say, man, what are you doing? You freezing on it. What you I said, I gotta wait till Coach Gamble come down the street. And I didn't continue what I was doing until the, I couldn't see his brake lights no more. It was immortal me. He was the guy I wanted to be like, grow up, play for, just he was the guy who did it for me. And uh I just thank Coach Gamble for even today. I run my own trucking company. At the end of the day, I go back to them and I, I, I do a self inventory. Would Coach Gamble approve the way I talk to them people? The transaction I made, would he, would he, would he handle them people? They got a little ugly with me, but I, I backed off and was kind to them. And uh, I just still refer back to some of the things he said to make me a better person 
and I still I guess I still as a grown man look for his approval. So thank you, Coach, for everything you gave me. Uh, I'm like Coach. I was a young boy in a broken home. I needed that male figure, and uh, as a boy, I needed him. As a man, I admire him. He's my hero for life. No matter how big I get, I don't never think I'll fill the shoes of this man right here. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, Coach. trucking company and whatever got in there. So I do have to be easy on him because he gave me two new TVs too. So I, you know, he was, he was, I don't know what he was doing, but he had some TVs. He had some TVs. So he gave, he, gave, he gave me two of them. But, but let me say this, in basketball, Don Dale was a pure shooter, and he was a good, a good, outstanding basketball player. And he came back off of the 84 state championship. He graduated in 85. So he was one of the returning players off of the 84 state championship team. Okay. And then his partner in crime was uh, Kenneth Makaya, you know, Kenneth could shoot that ball too. Both of them, both of them, they could shoot that rock. But at the same time, we had Anthony Allen. Anthony, Anthony was a, a junior. Had Ronnie Halliburton. I'm talking about size and you know all of this stuff right here. I'm looking for a repeat. <laughs> Okay? So all I need is for Don Zell and Kevin McKayer to take care of business. You know, go to the big boys. And this is our strength. Go to the big boys. We went down, we were playing Bay City in the regional game. How many times you think Alan Burton and Anthony Allen touch the basketball. <laughs> it's falling back from deep three and all that kind of stuff like that. So consequently, we lost and we came, we came home. You know? So don't tell what went wrong. I was wide open. <laughs> but I love him. <laughs> Hey man, it's so good to see so many familiar faces haven't been home in a while, you know, um, just doing life, taking care of kids, wife, and things like that. Um, good to see some of my teammates, Paul Queen, Victor Henry, everybody. Um, you know, wouldn't have missed this event for the world. Coach Gamble has meant so much to me in my life and everything that I've done. You know, all of us weren't fortunate enough to go off and play basketball. Um, I was fortunate in that regard. I left uh, the University of Oklahoma after leaving Lincoln High School, um, played 11 years in Spain, and everything that Coach Gamble instilled in me uh, followed me along that journey. Um, in the beginning, I thought Coach was talking about me with missing school, you know. <laughs> I was one of those kids when I got to Lincoln High School, he had to like the fire under me a little bit. And um, I would just like to say thank you, Coach, for not giving up on me. Um, life is good, I'm blessed, and I have you to thank for that. Um, I'd also like to thank James Jr. and the kids for sharing your dad with us, yeah. with the community. Yeah. I would not have missed this event for the world. It's great to see you, Coach, 
and I'm glad that I got the opportunity to stand here and tell you how much you have meant to my life. Thanks, guys. First, first, let me say this about Brian Sarier. Brian was the first player that I had. Brian, you all might not know it, but Brian was a high school All-American in football. He was a tight end. That's what he wound up in, but if one while he was a quarterback, one while he was this and that and all that kind of stuff like that. So he came to me his junior year and he wanted to quit football. That's why do you want to quit football? Oh, coach, I might get hurt or something like that. See, you can get hurt playing basketball. And number one, you can get hurt messing with me, too. <laughs> so, he, so, so he went back out there and he played. And uh, so the next year, the senior year, uh, his daddy. Well, coach, you know, that boy might get hurt playing out there, you know what I mean? I said, look, Mr. Saeed, so the boy didn't play, has he been hurt yet? <laughs> no, he hasn't, but you know it always is. Uh, I said, well, he's not going to quit. He's not going to quit. I don't want any quitters on the, in, in the basketball program, you know. So I want him to stay with football. And he did that. He stayed with football, but he took a scholarship in basketball to the University of Oklahoma. So I, that was another uh, whatever that made me realize I was doing something right. You know, for a kid with all that football ability, you know, we could have been living on Sugar Hill if he'd have been <laughs> fed up with me. But I'm still <laughs> <laughs> but the only time that I was really mad at Brian, we were with Lake Charles. Lake Charles. But I thought he was out rebounding us and going on and on. Brian don't have one rebound. He's seven feet tall. You know, all of this and that. So, at halftime, we were going to the dressing room. I said, Brian, so you're not rebounding the basketball, son. I said, Coach, you said we was going with the inside game. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, and they're not throwing me the ball. I said, you ain't throwing it to nobody either because you ain't rebounding. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So he kind of halfway turned his head and they thing you I was all up in his chest. <laughs> See, that, like I told y'all a while ago, you know, you know, I don't fuss at kids, you know, I, I, you know, I publicly and berate them in front of the fans and all that kind of stuff, but I get my stuff in now. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, Brian told me, well, well they, they, uh, they not throwing the ball inside. We're supposed to be inside. Boy, and I was up on him. PJ was scared, and you see, every, everybody was scared because I was all over him. I said, You got one more. I said, I'm not going to tell you. Not another time to rebound that basketball. Do you hear me? And he said, Yes. <laughs> 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 Too. A lot of them that 
you don't have to fuss. But sometimes you got to say a little something ugly to let them know you love them too. <laughs> you know. But anyway, thank you, fellas. Thank you, all of you. Uh, that one. Oh, Dave. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, you know, don't get on me too hard, but um, I'm I'm just honored to actually be here honoring you. And um, I grew up in the family home, 1108 Lincoln. So I'm on the even side. If anybody knows the address of Lincoln High School, it's 1023. So that's on the odd side, so I'm right across the street. And about five or six years old, you know, your mama just tell you, come home for the, for the lights hit. You know, for those dark lights hit. So I'm over there, the gym, I just, I don't know, it's just a gravitational pull. I was getting gravitated to that gym. And uh, I kept going over there. And uh, I go this day, skip a couple of days, go back. I knocked the balls off of the rack. Coach put the balls back on the rack. I go back over there a couple of days later. He said, look, boy, you knocked these balls off this rack again. I'm going to give you something to do. I said, what do you want me to do? So I ended up being the ball boy <laughs> at six years old. And um, the next year, we went to the state championship. And uh, Coach got five medals. I got. I mean, Coach had four, I have five. Thankfully, Butte brought me on. And so I, I've got five and I beat Coach by one. But Coach, thank you for making me a part of the legacy and just taking me on the ride. I look up to you. I appreciate that I was over there just knocking your balls off and you gave me something to do. Thank you, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> David is a lawyer. So his mama is the problem, not him. <laughs> There's nothing more that I can say about David. You know, in fact, the other day I left some sweet potatoes at his house, not at his house, at his grandmother's house, for his mother to bake us, bake us some sweet potato pies or something like that. And the last time I did that, she told me she, I didn't leave any sweet potatoes there. You know, then I come to find out she had cooked the sweet potatoes and everything, and they had a little sweet potato jamboree. <laughs> but at the same time, I was so proud to have David, and uh, he did he did a wonderful job, and and I was I was glad that uh, Coach Butte kept him uh, uh, in the program, and you can see see everybody you don't have to be a star to be in our show either man that don't never bring that up you don't have to be a star, but you have to be able to contribute. And he did that. He wasted popcorn on the floor <laughs> and knocked the balls off the rack, and, but he picked them up. <laughs> but as you all have gathered from these young men who, who came up here and spoke, that we had some wonderful, wonderful young people in our program, and it was because you had to reach certain standards to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And we and we are we all so proud of that. And uh, we just can't we just can't say enough about our youngsters uh, uh, at Lincoln High School during those days. And we just didn't win didn't, didn't just good basketball players. We did a lot of other good things over there too. So but thank you all. Uh, we're getting to the end of this, so if y'all just be patient. I hope you notice, Coach, I added Earl Evans to the uh, lineup over here on the left. We inducted Earl Evans a few years back, and Coach was here and, and participated in that. And I thought he might like to see, or see Earl again. Earl's in our, in our exhibit as well. I want to show you a few things here, uh, Coach. Uh, Melvin Edwood, where are you, Melvin? I, I 
There he is. Okay, hide him behind that mask. I got you. Uh, Melvin has, has been instrumental in helping us gather some of this material that we have here today. So be sure. You know, Melvin's dad gave him to me. <laughs> and I did not give him back. No, no. So I, I've always been grateful for that and grateful for the job that Melvin has done and even what he's doing now. You see, you read off some things that I, I have been involved in and not just coaching, but working in the community. Those are things that I, I also wanted our youngsters uh, to do, to become productive young people. I'm not our mayor right now. I'm not going to tell anybody I had to throw him down. And he was in the gym. He wanted to play basketball. I took him up to the music room. <laughs> I took him up to the music room, and nobody can beat him singing, right? <laughs> did a great job tonight on the school song. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah. So we found a place for you. I would thank you for the help you've given us, and, and uh, I want to show you just some of the things that we were able to gather. Uh, we found a few trophies. You've had a hard time with trophies. All of us have had a hard time with all these things. These are some bi-district and, and district championships. Uh, and UIL came to the aid, and the lost trophies that you have for the four state championships. Thank you, Melvin. Thank you, Congratulations, sir. You get it. You get them again. Yeah. If some guys just get it one time. You get it twice. Right. And I'm certainly appreciated. Uh, I'm, I'm certainly, certainly appreciative of uh, Dr. Brighter. He, he's the head of the UIL, and I called him, told him we had lost state championship trophies uh, in, in the uh, storm, and uh, he said, "Coach, don't worry about that. I'll get you some. I'll get you some replicas." And get them sent down there to you. And I came through. He came through big time. I, want, I need you to come over here this way just a little bit. I got a few, just a few more quick things I need to, to tell you. Um, I don't want to buy that. <laughs> it's an encyclopedia. It's $5 down and $10 a month for the rest of your life. <laughs> I, what's in this box is not what I'm going to give you at this point, but I'm going to tell you what it represents. Uh, Representative Joe Deschatel, Jackie Savoy helped, helped us with this. They have a flag that they're flying over the Capitol, and they're, it's today, so they, they can't give it the thing, they'll, they'll bring it to you later, but it's going to commemorate this as your day, and then you'll have that stick, the te Texas flag that flew over our Capitol in Austin. That's going to be something to begin to do, okay? <laughs> and Coach, this is, I think, I think the last thing, you you lost a lot of trophies, we finally found something that won't uh, you won't lose in water. This is a trophy commemorating this day and all you have given to our community through your efforts. <laughs> Folks, we thank you. We want you to go to the museum, take time. And uh, it's just a pleasure having you come back and see us. We have a lot of fun down there, as you can obviously see. Coach, congratulations. We appreciate you so much.